Hello everybody, this is Mark from Auto8. Uh, I'm going to do a video today on this 2013 uh, Kia Sorento Hybrid. The customer's complaint on this car is that the vehicle surges uh, when he tries to accelerate. Um, I've had the car out and it does uh, surge. What I noticed driving it was that uh, when we hit about 20 kilometers an hour or so, um, and we try to accelerate the car, that's when it, it, it seems to surge. I also noticed that about the same time, uh, there is an EV light on this thing. So this car um, has an EV mode where uh, the electric motor will, will drive it. Um, it's not a super powerful electric motor, so that at a certain point it needs a gas motor for assist. When the gas motor kicks in, the EV light goes out and from my observations driving the car when the uh, surge happens when I'm trying to accelerate the car it happens right about the time that the EV light goes out and the gas motor uh, kicks in and, and tries to provide that additional torque so how we're going to start with this thing um, we're going to throw a scan tool on it and, and scan all the systems for codes hopefully we will see uh, some kind of a code that will point us in the right direction as to what's wrong with this thing. So I'm going to grab my scan tool and uh, let's see what the codes are. So we have our scan tool hooked up and it has correctly identified the car as a uh, Kia Optima Hybrid. We're going to go ahead and do a quick uh, all module scan for codes. So here's the first screen of our all module uh, scan for code. You can see that uh, the engine, the MCU, which is the high voltage control system and the hybrid control system doesn't have any faults in it. Neither does the automatic transmission. But we'll kind of let this thing go out and finish its code test. And here we can see the last page of the scan and there's no codes anywhere. Looks like it's time for a road test. So right now you can see that the car is in EV mode there's no energy flowing between the battery on the front wheels or the engine in the front wheels the gas engine is off you can see the tachometer there so watch what happens when I um, start to accelerate you can see that we're providing battery power to the front wheels uh, this is basically uh, pure EV mode now <clears throat> this car surges I'm just let me get it straight here and I'll show you what happens here all right so I'm pretty much lined up so I'm going to accelerate um, and get to the car up to the point where it wants to bring on the gas motor watch what happens when it brings on the gas motor it'll go out of EV mode and then keep an eye on the tachometer faster here See how it dropped out of EV mode there and it brought the gas motor on. Now the gas motor is revving extremely high because what's happening here is the computer is calling for the torque from the gas motor to be added to the torque from the EV and it kind of looks to me like the uh, gas motor is not connected to the powertrain. Alright, let's take a look at the uh EV powertrain in this thing. So what this guy has, this guy has two electric motors. There's a large motor generator kind of sandwiched between the engine and the automatic transmission. There is a second motor generator up here. This guy is basically uh, 
a generator and a starter so I'm going to kind of rule him out. Now when we look at the powertrain, the automatic transmission, <coughs> the motor generator here, which is, uh, Kia calls a traction motor, basically um, is a direct input into the automatic transmission. When we want to add in the gasoline engine torque, it's done through this clutch right here. Now, when we first looked at this, we thought that this was possibly a one-way clutch. It's not. It's actually a wet plate clutch, and it's driven by, or it's engaged by using this electric oil pump over here. So when the gas motor is called for, this electric pump turns on, it pressurizes a hydraulic channel, and that engages this clutch right here. Now we suspect that there's either something wrong with the hydraulic circuit, or this clutch uh, is burnt out. And luckily for us, uh, we're, we do have scan data on this clutch, so we can actually see what the computer wants for as far as pressure on this clutch and what the actual pressure is. So we're going to take the car back out with the scan tool, and we're just going to kind of monitor the uh, clutch circuit uh, while we're driving this thing into the um, gas motor assist portion, which is where this clutch would become uh, relevant. This is where the clutch would uh, uh, be enabled or where the clutch would be basically joining the gasoline engine to the electric motor and then both going into the automatic transmission. So uh, basically we're going to grab the scan tool, uh, take it back out on the road, and we're going to see what happens with this clutch hydraulically when the computer calls for uh, clutch engagement. Alright, so this is the data from our road test. Uh, basically what we're looking at here is the clutch command pressure right here. Uh, you can see it's calling for over 5 bar. One bar is approximately 14.7 or let's call it 15 psi for easy math. So 5 times 15 would be approximately 75 psi. So that's what it's asking for. And <coughs> this data was taken at a slightly different time, but this is the actual fluid pressure uh, in the channel. You can see here that it's uh, a little over 5 bar, so it's asking for approximately 75 psi of pressure. It's getting it. This tells me that hydraulically we don't have a problem here, so it's now it's time to take a closer look at the uh, mechanical wet plate clutch. Now since we don't do um, much in the way of repair work at our shop, we had the car sent over to BAM Automotive. Uh, shout out to them and they actually took the transmission out of the car so we could take it apart. Alright, so we've removed the uh, motor generator assembly from the transmission. Uh, you can see that the wet plate clutch is kind of sitting right in the middle of it. Uh, we're going to remove that clutch. So now that we've got the clutch out of it, and it comes out fairly easily, it just uh, pulls up and out of the uh, housing, and we're just going to pop the clutch apart. So as we get the clutch pack apart, what we should have is a steel plate, a clutch plate, a steel plate. Get the idea. I don't suspect we'll see that. And as we separate the plates, nothing but steel. All the clutch material is gone. So. Definitely the clutch is bad in this thing. So Hyundai does make, or sorry, Kia does make a repair kit uh, for this particular problem. You can see here, this is the new clutch ready to go in. You just have to soak it in oil, uh, give it a half an hour or so, and then into the transmission it goes. So uh, bottom line on this one was it had a bad uh, hydraulic clutch, and uh, we're going to put a new clutch in it, and away we go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like this video, please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.